Liberty turns 80 this year, and to help celebrate, we're hosting an exhibition here at St. Martin in the Fields Church in London. This is the very spot where our founders first met 80 years ago. Britain in the 1930s was gripped by social unrest. Hunger marches were brutally obstructed by the police, thousands of police, some of them even masquerading as marchers in order to incite violence. Sound familiar? Britain today is once more gripped by economic strife. Protesters take to the streets and undercover officers have infiltrated peaceful protest groups and even grieving families. Liberty 80, the anniversary exhibition, celebrates 80 years of holding the powerful to account. Let's have a look, shall we? Liberty, the National Council for Civil Liberties, of course campaigns for all of our rights and freedoms, but the heart of our struggle began all those years ago with the right peacefully to protest. You'll remember that it was the hunger marches who met with a brutal police response when they finally came from the north to assemble here in London. And from that moment on, a major part of Liberty's work has been to keep watch over the right to peaceful dissent, in part by providing legal observers on large organised demonstrations in London and elsewhere in the country. This has been going on throughout our history and as recently as 2011 where Liberty Legal Observers, wearing the distinctive lanyards, observed the TUC March for the Alternative. In December of 2007, the new Labour government announced plans to extend the time that terror suspects could be held without charge from 28 to 42 days. That's six weeks or over a thousand hours in custody without knowing why. Liberty's charge or release campaign aimed to persuade members of parliament, the government and the public that this proposal was wrong in principle and counterproductive in practice. This is a, a, a whiteboard that's been fixed and framed and it's called the battle against 42 days and it represents our understanding of parliamentary Labour Party voting intentions just 24 hours before the fateful and infamous vote that we lost by just nine votes. There were, of course, nine members of the Democratic Unionist Party in the House of Commons at that time. One common theme throughout our 80-year history has been the appetite for those in power to pry on our private lives. No scrutiny for them and no privacy for us seems to be the desire of governments of all colours throughout time. Most recently, we've fought campaigns against compulsory identity cards and the great big brother database that would have sat behind them. That was a very successful Liberty campaign. But the struggle continues and just in the past year, we've seen devastating revelations of a policy that was operating on both sides of the Atlantic to scoop up some of our most intimate internet information. Now the government would say nothing to hide, nothing to fear. We say we all have something to protect and without a little bit of respect for our private lives, how can we enjoy any intimacy, dignity or trust? Throughout its history, Liberty has been supported by the creative community. Writers like E.M. Forster, H.G. Wells and Vera Britton back in 1934, more recently by the cultural icon and fashion designer Vivian Westwood, here with some of her designs and here depicted by the great photographer and Liberty supporter Mary McCartney. Mums make particularly good Liberty members and great human rights campaigners. Think of Doreen Lawrence. And here, in this little part of the exhibition, we celebrate Janice Sharp, Gary McKinnon's mother. You'll remember that he had Asperger's syndrome, was very, very vulnerable, but managed to hack in to the Pentagon computer while he was looking for UFOs on the internet after a 10-year campaign where Janice, supported by Liberty, mobilised people in politics and civil society around the world. After a 10-year campaign, Janice triumphed and Gary was spared from summary extradition to the United States. 
this photograph shows a very simple stunt that members participated in, where they, they made extradition watch paper planes and photographed them in different parts of the country. The most ingenious places they could think of, here by Big Ben and here at Stonehenge. And above it, so it's a rather touching note that, that Janice sent to me and my colleagues, to Shami and her amazing team at Liberty for the huge part you all played in helping to save my son Gary and for the incredible people that you all are. With much love, Janice.